Okay, so one thing I've been tackling lately is going through different people's uh, problems and trying to fix them. So this one I actually found on the Hacking with Swift website. Uh, and so essentially what they wanted to create was something where they could click anywhere on the view and recognize the tap gesture. It would locate the tap gesture. And using that information, you could just create a new view every single place you clicked. So this is what I created. Let's look at the code. Essentially it was this. So you can come here and just click anywhere and every time you click a new one is created and it's an array of all these views so they're stored okay and we're using drag gesture which means that at some point we can actually do something where we can click on one of them and drag it so it knows if we're clicking on a fresh space you know then we're good to go but if we're clicking on um, somewhere where there uh, is already a view it'll recognize that we're actually trying to drag an old view okay so that's something you could definitely take this uh, you can take it a step further and if you guys are interested in something like that you can put it in the comments below and I can make another video on that but for the purpose of this video, we'll just click and create a new view, okay? So let's go ahead and we're going to create this together. I did create an example already, but what we're going to do is I'm going to create this with you. So I got that because we're going to use that. And let's look at the new project. So single, single view app, we'll call this uh, tap for new view, okay? And click next. We're going to desktop. We'll call this tap for code for new view okay and I'll create it and I'll create it inside there so the first thing that I'm going to point out is that we're using a drag gesture okay and it's actually just way more usable there's no reason why we can't use it it's not that much more taxing on the system all right so I'm going to start by creating this right here and essentially it's uh, it's an enum and it's we're calling a drag state and it's going to be able to track whether or not we're actively dragging and it'll also be able to track how far we drag to so this translation right here okay so the next thing I'm going to do is let's look at the code here so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new uh, structure called new view okay so that structure is going to have just a unique ID okay so an ID or UUID and a location that's going to store its point Theoretically, we could also start storing all sorts of things in here, okay? But the fact that we're creating structs and not just, you know, storing a bunch of uh, random IDs inside of an array of strings or something like that, this is much more powerful. It's way more expandable, okay? So the next thing we'll do is we'll create uh, a state variable that, con that contains all of the um, new views, okay? We'll call that novel views, and it'll be empty up at start. And the last tap location will be a state variable of CG point, and it'll start out with an initial value of dot zero, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and create both of those. That's inside of content view, but above body view. All right, and now I'm going to create a gesture state. That's going to track our gesture. So we're going to call it um, drag state, and it's going to be of type drag state dot inactive, okay? So the next thing we're going to do is let's look inside the body here, okay? So I'm going to create our drag gesture, okay? And our drag gesture has three pieces, all right? So the first piece inside this drag gesture. Notice that the drag gesture is inside of body, okay? It's inside of body, which means that what we're gonna have to do here is we're gonna say return group, okay? And that'll let us actually do some sort of, we can write variables in here now. So let drag equal drag gesture. So we're creating a drag gesture, big key items here, that the minimum distance has to be zero so that it detects the, even just a single tap. It's saying, even if you drag me zero you know, a, a total distance of zero, it still thinks it's a drag, okay? Because what distinguishes a, a usually what distinguishes a drag from a tap is that a tap does not move, but a drag does move, okay? But by doing this, we're kind of saying a drag and a tap, we're, we're kind of blurring that line. And then the next piece is we're going to say coordinate space is dot global, okay? And this drag, okay, is going to be, so this drag is going to be updating the drag state variable, okay? And we're going to be in this closure here, we're going to have drag, state, and transaction. Or okay. And so now, after you close up that drag, um, the drag gesture or right, instantiation or the updating right here, okay. So if right here is the end of the drag gesture, we're saying now we have our first uh, you know dot updating, okay. So now we know what it's updating. Now we know what happens on end, okay, so that's gonna be on end. So value is going to store all sorts of really great information. You'll find that we can actually say value dot, dot and it shows us location, predicted, and location. 
predict it and translation, star location, time, translation, a lot of good things, okay? So we're gonna use value because it's pretty powerful and we're gonna say on ended, well, let's start by saying, let's start with right here and saying on changed self, actually we might not even need this realistically. We probably don't need this at all actually. So we could probably get rid of on changed entirely, okay? And actually, yeah, we will, we will indeed, uh, what we'll probably end up doing is we're just going to keep it for now. So that way we can, uh, we, we'll, we'll track it. If you look at the example I had, what was nice about this was that we were able to update this, this uh, text inside here using that variable up top. Okay, so we're going to keep it, but it's not necessary. So we're going to say on changed, you're going to set the last tap location. That's the state variable. It's going to be equal to value dot start location. Okay. And then that's the entire on changed function. Okay. Now on ended, we're going to use value in and we're going to say let start location equal value dot start location. Okay. So that makes sense, right? And end location is going to be value dot location. So that means that if I started dragging here and I ended right here, then that area that this will be the start location. And this is value dot location. That's my current position. So now I'm just going to put a small closure here. We wanted to distinguish between the fact that, you know, like if I start, if I click here and then I drag all the way over here, that's not really a tap anymore. So I might not want to create a view. So what I'm, this, this conditional right here is checking one thing. It's checking how far I've dragged. So it just wants to check, you know, if I clicked here and I only moved maybe 10 pixels right or left, then I probably was trying to tap and I was just in a hurry. I might have smudged my tap, right? So that's what this is. We're saying if the absolute value of the start minus end x locations is less than 10 and the start location and location y differential, the absolute value is only less than 10 or less than or equal to 10, then it must have been a tap. So you can set the threshold to do whatever you want. You can say 20. You can even get rid of it and just say, even if I click here and drag all the way here, still create a, a view down here, okay? But this conditional, for the reason I use it is I had it to say, you know, if... Uh, if, you know, you can only have a, a threshold of roughly 10 pixels. So if that, in fact, uh, is satisfied, then create a new or a append our novel views array with new view, and its location will be equal to the start location. Okay? So we don't need that. So let's look at what we have left, okay? I mean, we really don't have too, too much left. Now we're just going to get to the um, actual view here. So the Z stack, I'm going to grab all of it, okay? So if we look at the actual view now, so I'm going to take this drag, I'm going to minimize that, or sorry, I'm going to minimize the unended is what I meant to say. Okay, so now let's look inside the return group, okay? The return group is where we're going to work, okay? So now inside of the return group, we're going to say Z, Z stack, and we're going to create, we're going to get rid of offset for a second, okay? We're going to create a Z stack that in the background has a last tap, okay? And it's just a text that says last tap, and it's going to say, uh, self dot last tap location dot debug description. So essentially what it's saying is it's checking where I last tapped, okay? And it's changing the text inside of there. But I haven't clicked play and that's why it's not working, okay? And accordingly, the next piece that's on top of, the next piece on top of that is going to be the for each here, okay? I'm gonna make this white. I don't like that red. I'm gonna make it white, okay? And now what I'm saying is, for each item inside of novel views, that's how I'm tracking all these views, I'm gonna create a circle with a frame, I'm just giving it a random width of 20 and 20, okay? And right now, no matter how many times I click, it's always gonna end up with a circle in the center, okay? Because I haven't told it how to offset it yet, okay? But the way I'm gonna offset it, well, first of all, just before we get to that, you'll notice that the background color of the Z stack is white and I gave the Z stack, I also gave it a frame of with a width of um, the screen width and the height of the screen height. Okay, that's what this line is. All right, and then the last piece here is the get offset function. Okay, pretty straightforward. Um, the way it works is just we say get offset. We feed it the offset of where I started, right? Because technically the zero zero coordinate default in Swift UI is like dead center. You know, when I say zero zero, I mean like where where a view wants to be, right? But when you do something, when you click and you tap here, the zero, zero is considered to be all the way up here, okay? So it's considered to be like right up here, okay? So this get offset is essentially, it's subtracting that distance and it's subtracting the distance of the screen, so half and half, and then it's just adding 
the offset, uh, um, the offset of the start location of the tap. So that's what this is. So saying let the, let the x offset equal half and then half plus the original offset again. Okay. And then it, we just return that back in, and that's what this function is right here. So if I save it, and I resume, now I can just tap anywhere, and it should just be there. So, All right, there you go. And that is the entire thing. All right, thanks for watching. See you in the next video.